the unworthy pilgrim of our Lord, long desired to go to the Holy Land, to preach and be ready to die for faith in Christ, even among the infidels. But our Lord thought otherwise. When the Lord appeared with the cross on his shoulders, Oh, that moment when the Father invited you, Jesus, to take me, this unworthy servant, in your service. You turned to me and imprinted those unforgettable words in my soul. It is my will that you serve us. Beloved Diego, you were the first one to be united with our Master in heaven. Intercede for us that we, your friends in the Lord, now dispersed among so many nations, may live our lives worthy of praise, reverence, and service of God our Lord. When life closes one door, the Lord opens another. I once lived my youth, given over to the vanities of the world. Then the Lord, through his mercy, set me free from my illusions and purified my attachments. Oh, what freedom to live. My dear brother in Christ, Master Francis Saviour, everlasting greetings in the Lord. Let's promise that whoever meets the Lord in heaven first will support the other through his prayers while eagerly waiting to meet again. Till then, I remain entirely yours in our Lord. Ignacio. The pain in my stomach is unbearable at times. How our Lord must have suffered, choosing pain and death to set me free from my sins. I long to be free and open, whatever life brings, health or sickness, riches or poverty, honor or dishonor, a long life or a short one. What I long for is to know and follow the will of the Lord so that all that I do and experience 
will bring great glory to the name of the Lord. Lord Jesus, you have set your eyes upon us, unworthy though we are, and invited us to a personal relationship with you. As we come to know you more intimately, love you more ardently, and follow you more closely, May we also grow to be free from self-love, self-will and self-interest in order to draw many others to the fullness of life that you offer. Longing to live our life in the Lord's presence, we keep asking ourselves, What have I done for Christ? What am I doing for Christ? What ought I to do for Christ? I was aware that my time was approaching to meet my Creator. So I asked Polanco to try to procure for me the blessing of the Holy Father. However, he did not think that it was so urgent. And having other works to attend to, he said that he would see to it later. I left it to his discreet judgment. I was very honest with those whom I trusted, and I do acknowledge that at times I treated them rather severely, seeking only the greater good. Having experienced personally how I could easily be deceived by the evil spirit, I realized how careful one needs to be on guard against the wiles of the deceitful one. Being closely united to our eternal King and universal Lord, we find the strength to be like him in bearing all injuries and insults, even in being ready to choose poverty in order to labor with him to conquer the whole world and all his enemies. Therefore, choosing the standard of our Lord while relying on God our Lord, who will cause everything to be provided, we seek to love poverty as a mother, for it serves as a bulwark to preserve the freedom of one's inner religious spirit against all avarice that suffocates. Helping in the formation of priests is to be considered a work of the highest value among the chief ministries of the society. Therefore, seminarians who attend our universities are to be cared for with special attention. I explained to them how important it was to buy land for the Roman college. Even though they did not see the urgency of this, 
I was convinced that we did not have much time to procrastinate. How much more did my Lord suffer out of love for me? Touched by this love, I felt drawn to feel sorrow with Christ in sorrow, a broken spirit with Christ so broken, tears and interior suffering with Christ who endured all this for me. Father of my soul, the older children would not even let me say my office or eat or sleep until I taught them one prayer or another. Then I began to realize how true that the kingdom of heaven belongs to such as these. Your least and most useless son, Francesco. When I am in desolation, I sometimes tend to think that the Lord has left me to my own powers. Even though it seems as if the Lord has withdrawn his abundant favor and his love, he still supplies sufficient grace for my eternal salvation. My beloved Pablo was often tormented by scruples and anxiety, and many a time I helped him find peace again in his soul. The Lord did touch him and guide him. I realized that he needed to be handled gently, just as a drop of water is soaked lightly into a sponge. When we are in desolation, it helps to acknowledge that sufficient grace is already available in order to find courage to resist the hostile forces while drawing strength from our Creator. The Lord showed me how to bring peace to persons who were disturbed and afflicted. Even when they themselves found it difficult to explain what they were going through. He taught me that mortification of one's pride is far better than that of the flesh. And emptying oneself of self-love, self-will and self-interest is better than long hours of prayer. Different people need different approaches in order to be helped. Some are to be guided by giving milk as to a child, while others by feeding bread with the crust as to men. The Lord continues to labor and work in all creatures on the face of the earth, giving them existence, conserving life, granting growth and sensation. He also continues this, his creative labor of love, in me, while dwelling in me, making me his temple, because I am created in his image.
Even when he was sure that the time was approaching for him to depart from this earth, he did not summon anyone to give his blessing or to name a successor. Very much aware that the Society of Jesus was not instituted by human means, he fully trusted that God would preserve and carry forward what he deigned to begin for his service and the aid of souls. So the limping pilgrim, having fulfilled his journey on earth, proceeded towards the gates of heaven in a simple, ordinary way, handing over his life to his Creator and Lord, whom as a valiant knight he sought to love and serve in all things throughout his life. passed away from this world in a common manner. Thank you. 